Mark Silvestri. I'm the owner of Top Cow Productions, one of the creators of The Darkness, and I'm here to talk about the uh, Darkness game coming out in June. Darkness uh, started as a comic book. We're celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year, and what better way to do that than have an amazing video game come out by Starbreeze and 2K Games. Um, for those familiar with the Chronicles of Riddick, you already know what's coming. Uh, these guys have taken it to the next level. Darkness is amazing. Uh, these guys just uh, have taken the technology that's available to them today and just exploited it to the 11th degree. It's coming out for both uh, Xbox 360 and for the PS3. Um, for us, it's a great thrill. You know, the, working with guys uh, like Starbreeze on a comic book property that we've created 10 years ago and is obviously near and dear to our hearts. To have these guys come in and not only understand Jackie Estacado and the world of the darkness, but create this amazing video game and this completely immersible world where you actually are this guy, that's amazing. We're thrilled. Well, Jackie Estacado is, uh, when you meet him in the comic and the video game, he's uh, about to uh, reach 21. It's uh, the eve of his 21st birthday. He's a gangster living the gangster life in New York uh, with the biggest crime family there. And uh, he's got everything. He's got everything he thinks he needs. He's got the girls, he's got the money, he's got the cars, he's got the respect from the family that raised him uh, as an orphan. And uh, what he also has, he doesn't realize, is something called the darkness, which is something passed down generation to generation from father to son for thousands, perhaps millions of years. And it's this dark, terrifying power that he barely gets control of. And he gets it on his 21st birthday, which also happens to be the time when his own family, the family that he thought loved him, betrays him. Uh, Jackie then gets the darkness power, so he's got two things on his mind. How to learn to use this dark power, and how to get a little bit of payback. Well, the darkness is uh, its terrific because Starry is very smart. They uh, were very cognizant of the fact that most of the people who are playing this game have never heard of the comic book. And what they do is they establish Jackie Estacado, you, in the game, the world he lives in, not only the gritty urban street world of the mob, but also this fantastic other world, this world of this terrible, dark, evil power that he has control over. And the great thing in the game is that you have both conventional weapons, terrific gunplay designed by Starbreeze, and also control of this really dark, evil power. That allows you to bring forth these little minions, these little alter egos of Jackie called Darklings, these little creatures that run around doing these horrible things with a great sense of humor at the same time. So there's a lot to do in the game, all of it entertaining, and uh, you know, I can't say enough how great Starbreeze did. The Darkness video game is coming out on both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and both those versions are amazing. Uh, I believe they're, they're equal uh, in quality. And uh, for us, uh, the important thing was getting the right developer involved, and Starbreeze had just come off the Chronicles of Riddick. They were looking for the next project, and they were familiar with what the Darkness was. And they actually came to us with these amazing pre-production uh, materials. Incredible artwork by Matthias, who just visualized this amazing world for Jackie Estacado. Not only the gritty urban part of it, but this fantastic other world that is also part of the game. And when we saw that, and when we saw what their vision of the game would be, we said, you know what, where do we sign? Let's make this happen. Um, one of the great early things that Starbreeze proved to us as to why they believed in the darkness and why they wanted to make such a, a faithful game to the book was that they actually brought in uh, Paul Jenkins, who was a writer on the comics, to actually write the video game itself, which is why it's so rich in character as you play the game and why it's so immersive and why you believe within a few frames, within a few seconds, that you are Jack Estacado and you are part of this world. So we were thrilled from the get-go uh, with Starbreeze and when 2K came involved and uh, just basically allowed Starbreeze to do whatever they needed to do to make this an incredible game. Holy shit! Hi, I'm Anthony DeLuca. I'm a producer at 2K Games, and I'm the producer on The Darkness. The Darkness is basically a first-person shooter, and what kind of takes it above and beyond your normal, everyday FPS game is uh, The Darkness Powers. I mean, taking it from comic to game, we really wanted to, the player to feel as Jackie, feel as he's always being surrounded by the darkness and by the shadows. Uh, once you go into darkness mode, you kind of get these two demon heads that come out on the sides, and you really feel powerful and you know empowered to, with these great abilities that Jackie's been uh, blessed and cursed with at the same time. And we really wanted to convey that in gameplay. 
Uh, you were able to summon Darklings, uh, which are Jackie's little alter egos, and control them. So you have your, basically your own little army of minions that do your bidding. Uh, they're vicious and funny all at the same time. Uh, you're able to summon black holes. Uh, you're also able to summon a demon arm, which is basically this large tentacle that you shoot out from the shadows. And you're able to impale enemies, pick up large objects, all the way from like cars to shipping containers to hitting a helicopter with it. So we really want to empower the player. The other thing that what's interesting about the darkness is, like it's called, darkness. You have to go around and shoot at the lights. It's to your benefit to go into a room and you see where the enemies are and, you know, to try and shoot the lights, which is kind of a new gameplay that we really haven't seen yet, so, and which wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the current gen stuff. What we really wanted to do was encourage the player to, you know, use his powers kind of how he sees fit. So he'll come across like puzzles and progression stoppers that, okay, he really has to think about, you know, how could I do this? Can I send the creeping dark, which is kind of like you sending one of these little demon heads out and remote controlling it, uh, you know, send it through air vents and try to open a door from the other side. Uh, another option is to kind of like look inside the, a door and kind of see a darkling portal and try to summon a darkling to kind of open the door from you on the inside. So we really want the player to explore with their powers and really have their choice to don't do their own thing and progress through the game to see how they fit. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things that we wanted to do was uh, multiplayer. I mean, uh, Starbreeze was very adamant about getting it in there too. So we have one to eight multiplayers uh, for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, now the catch is with multiplayer, you get to actually play as these little darklings, which you get to control, which you see in the single player, but never actually get to control, like from the first person point of view. So uh, we have what we call shape shifting. So you could kind of uh, run around in a map, playing as a mobster, you know, your standard you know, uh, shotgun, uh, you know, AK-47, pistols, et cetera, et cetera. But then you could shapeshift right into this little darkling who's able to crawl on ceilings and walls. He's able to pounce 50 feet and decapitate his opponents and whatnot. So it really adds this cool like, element to the multiplayer that's totally different from the single player. Uh, it also, you know, adds to unique situations. So, you know, you're running away, you're low on health as a, as a mobster, you run behind a corner, switch to a darkling, jump on the ceiling, wait for your enemy to kind of cross the corner, and, you know, pounce on him and decapitate him right there for a one-hit kill. So it really adds for interesting gameplay. And again, it's totally user-customizable. So if they want to play with this on, play darklings only, humans only, it's totally up to them. Yeah, what well, we definitely want to achieve uh, with multiplayer, with playing as the Darklings, obviously, is we want it to be frantic. <laughs> we want it to be action-packed, frantic, and, you know, have guys running all the way, all the way around, you know, mobsters on the ground, uh, Darklings running from building to building and, you know, pouncing on you. So we really wanted to kind of just push it over the top action, you know. You, this is not the kind of game that you're really going to be sneaking around corners <laughs> in the multiplayer. You're going to be running around and, you know, trying to take someone's head off, literally. Three-fifths of the game takes place in New York, which is where a lot of comic takes place as well. And, you know, with Top Cow's blessing, you know, we allowed Star Reeves to kind of put their own imprint on the game, which is kind of this darker, grittier feel for Jackie and this whole world. Uh, you know, when you get to see New York in the alleys, you kind of feel this grungy, you know, there's bums around, it's really dark and damp, and it's really, we wanted to bring the darkness into this whole, like, Star Breezes world, <laughs> which is kind of dark. Um, the other thing that we have in the, in the game is uh, TV sets, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have our own channel system, so you'll have, you know, the horror channel, the cartoon channel, the news channel, the music channel, and you'll be able to watch feature-length films like Nosferatu and To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, you also have feature-length cartoons like Popeye cartoons, full 30 minutes. And, you know, it's totally free to the player. If he wants to sit down and watch it, he can. But it also plays on uh, gameplay. A uh, good example is we have a news channel. And you actually see news flashes of things that are going on uh, around the city that you could go to. Uh, one thing I could think of off the top of my head is there's a construction site level where you actually invade and you're trying to hit, um, trying to carry out a contract on the foreman. And you'll see a news flash, and you'll actually hear the helicopter outside as well saying that there's a, you know, ongoing development at this construction site. And uh, enemies will come in from behind you and they'll ambush you. But if you happen to catch the news flash, you could ambush them instead. So it really ties into the gameplay. It's really to use advantage to kind of check the news channel every once in a while. Uh, yeah, we definitely support downloadable content right now, uh, like multiplayer maps, even single player areas, and Darkling. So it's really, you know, once the game, we get the game out there, we're going to see what the fan base wants. And uh, it's always a possibility. So. Uh, we have numerous different Darklings in the game. Uh, we have about you know, 15 different Darklings, you know, from ones that are, you know, uh, focus on killing the lights for you to ones that are ranged with a Gatling gun and things like that. But also one of the interesting things that we did was that the user could actually run around the environment and find different costumes for his Darklings. Another good example is the construction site where uh, you could find a hard hat and a sledgehammer. And you find this costume, and the next time you summon a Berserker Darkling, you could actually come with this uh, construction site hat and this sledgehammer. So it's really kind of a 
you know, a collecting game within the game itself for the players to kind of, uh, you know, do side missions, find uh, new areas with Creeping Dark and things like that. So, um, one of the things that was really important to, to both 2K and Starbreeze was just the, the production value with the, the voice talent and the animations. Starbreeze developed this technique called vocap, which was the simultaneous capture of voice and motion. And it really comes through in the game. Uh, we went out and got a great cast of characters. We have Kirk Acevedo from uh, HBO's Oz playing Jackie. We also have Lauren Ambrose, uh, the redheaded girl from Six Feet Under, as Jenny, uh, Jackie's love interest in both the comic and the game. And one of the cooler ones, too, that everybody loves is we have Mike Patton. Uh, he used to be the lead singer of Faith No More as the actual voice of the darkness. So you really have Mike Patton whispering to you in your ear throughout the whole game, which really adds to the, uh, the idea that Jackie's having this inner battle with darkness and whatnot. So uh, that was really important from the get-go, that we really drove home the story and made every NPC realistic. Everybody has their own face, their own voice, their own animations. Um, and I think we did a great job of it. Yeah, I mean, he's, Jackie's not your normal uh, do-gooder. <laughs> he's kind of the classic anti-hero, if you will. Um, you know, like I know Mark designed him from the start, from the comic book, is Jackie's got these powers, and he's kind of a, you know, he's, he's a mafia hitman to start with, so he's not a really good person nice to begin with. But uh, he does have this kind of moral compass, and, you know, he has this love interest and this good-hearted soul in Jenny that he kind of cares about. So in the back of his head, he, he knows what's right and wrong, but you know, it's up to him to kind of, you know, do the right thing every once in a while, even though he, sometimes he doesn't want to. Uh, <laughs> Shipping on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in June.